Hi all. So in today's class, we'll be concluding SCR. So the last portion is different turn on methods of SCR. So how we can make sure that a current is being passed from anode to cathode, there is a flow. So we will see how we do that in a silicon control rectifier. So thyristor turning on is also known as triggering. So turning on is also known as triggering or we also call it firing also. Triggering we can say, then firing we can say. So with anode positive with respect to cathode, a thyristor can be turned on by any one of the following techniques. So we have a forward voltage triggering, gate triggering, dv by dt triggering, temperature triggering, light triggering. Okay, so So now we will see uh, all the methods one by one. So basically what we do is, so you know the basic structure of SCR, right? So you will be having a PN, PN, PN junction. So this will be the gate. And now you have the Supply given here, yes, that is uh, positive uh, and output will, uh, will be forward bias, and this will be this also will be forward bias P to P N to N, right? So this is the anode and this is the cathode, and you have J1, J2, and J3. So J1, J3 are forward biased. These things you already seen. J1, J3 are forward bias, and J2 is reverse biased. So when we talk about forward voltage triggering, when breakover voltage VBO across a thyristor is exceeded, then the rated maximum voltage of the device thyristor is turned on, turned on, right? So because J2, J2 will be the depletion layer because it is reverse biased and width of the depletion layer decreases with increase in anode to cathode voltage. So in this case, this is a forward voltage triggering. So when J1, J3 is forward bias, the depth of J2, that is the depletion region will decrease. So at the breakover voltage, the value of the thyristor anode current is called the latching current IL. Breakover voltage triggering is not normally used as a triggering method and most circuit designs attempt to avoid its occurrence. So forward voltage triggering is not more normally used. When a thyristor is triggered by exceeding the VBO, the fault time of the forward voltage is quite low. However, a thyristor switches faster than VBO turn on than with the gate on. So permitted DIDT for breakout voltage turn on is lower. So, so what we are actually doing is width of the depletion region decreases with increase in anode to cathode voltage because P and N junctions of J1, J3 are forward biased. This accelerates the minority carriers across J2. And as a result, avalanche breakdown of J2 occurs at a particular anode to cathode voltage, which is called the forward breakover voltage. This allows free movement of carriers across the three junctions as J1 and J3 are already forward wise. So J2 is the depletion region. So dec decrease in the width of the depletion region due to the forward bias P J1 and J J3. And as a result, Avalanche breakdown occurs and current will start flowing. So this method is not normally used. So gate triggering is the most widely used method. Okay, so what we are doing is we are providing a gate pulse. So to this circuit, you will be providing the gate pulse. So gate pulse will be provided. So gate pulse will be provided. So this is gate and gate current IG will be provided. That is turning on of thyristor by gate triggering is simple and efficient method of firing the forward biased SCRs. In gate triggering, thyristor with forward breakover voltage higher than the normal working voltage is chosen. This means that the thyristor will turn, remain in forward blocking state with normal working voltage across the anode and cathode with the gate open. So that is the forward blocking state. So whenever thyristor turn on is required, a positive gate voltage between gate and cathode is applied. So I have shown you the figure. 
with gate current established charges are injected into the inner p layer and voltage at which forward breakover occur is reduced so charges from the n layer electrons that will move to the p layer when the gate pulse is applied to the p applied to the p layer the p layer is flooded with electrons from the cathode because the cathode n layer is heavily doped compared to p layer so these layer these electrons reaches the junction j2 and as a result width of the depletion layer of j2 decreases that's what the same thing i have written here higher the gate current lower is the forward breakover voltage when positive gate current is applied gate p layer is flooded with electrons from cathode as cathode of n layer is heavily doped as compared to the gate p layer as the thyristor is forward bias some of these electrons reaches junction j2 as a result width of the depletion layer around j2 is reduced this junction j2 to break down at an applied voltage lower than the forward breakover voltage vbo if magnitude of the gate current is increased more electrons will reach junction j2 the thyristor will get turned on at a much lower forward applied voltage that's the advantage of using gate triggering this is the most widely used and now we will talk about dv by dt triggering so with forward voltage across anode and cathode of a thyristor two outer junctions a and c are forward biased that is j1 j3 they are forward biased but the inner junction j2 is reverse biased the reverse bias junction j2 behaves like a capacitor because the space because of the space charge present there as pn junction has capacitance so larger the junction area the larger the capacitance if a voltage ramp is applied across the across the anode to cathode a current will flow in device to charge the device capacitance according to relation you know ic is equal to d into c into dv by dt before that you know i is equal to dq by dt and q is equal to cv so c into dv by dt okay so with increase in the rate of change of voltage if the rate of rise of forward voltage is high ic will be more this charging current plays the role of gate current ig this turn on the scr even when even when ig is equal to 0 okay so capacity effect is coming density of moving carry uh, charge carries in the device induces switch up so higher dv by dt higher ic this method of triggering is not desirable because high charging current ic may damage the thyristor that's why we give an external gate triggering and now we talk about the temperature triggering which is also not preferred during forward blocking most of the applied voltage appears across the reverse bias junction j2 this voltage across junction j2 associated with leakage current may raise the temperature of this junction with increase in temperature leakage current through junction j2 further increases this cumulative process may turn on the scr at some high temperature high temperature triggering may cause thermal runaway and is generally avoided that is what we call temperature triggering so and the last method is light triggering so when we are giving the photons to the light rays to the p region in this method light particles are made to strike the reverse bias junction which causes an increase in the number of electron hole pairs and triggering of the thyristor for light trigger discharge a slot is made in the inner p layer when it is irradiated free charge carriers are generated just like when gate signal is applied between gate and cathode pulse light of appropriate wavelength is guided by optical fiber so what actually is having a small opening in the inner p layer you can see a small opening in the inner p layer light rays with appropriate wavelength and intensity are allowed to strike j2 through this opening so this is actually called l a s c r that is light activated scr here additional electron hole pairs are generated at j2 which provides additional charge carriers at junction and leads to turn on the scr if the intensity of this light thrown on the resistor exceeds a certain value forward biased scr is turned on and it is called light activated scr so light trigger thyristor is most used in hvdc transmission system high voltage dc transmission system so i hope that all the four methods 
all the four mothers that is forward voltage triggering gate triggering dv by dt triggering temperature triggering and light triggering is clear for you so this is this can be a 5 to 8 marks university exam question and so now i have talked to you about turning on the thyristor so what will you do if you want to turn off the thyristor this is actually not in your syllabus but still i will just briefly explain so commutation is what we call the turning off of scr process of turning off a conducting thyristor that is current commutation voltage commutation through two mothers commutation is turning off the thyristor can be turned off turned on by applying a positive voltage about a volt or current of few tons of milli across the gate cathode terminal that we have seen now but scr cannot be turned off via the gear terminal it will turn off only after the anode current is negated either naturally or using post commutation techniques these methods of turn off do not refer to those cases where the anode current is gradually reduced to below holding current level manually or through a slow process so that is a different method once the scr is turned on it remains on even after the removal of gate signals as long as the minimum current holding current i is maintained in main or rectifier circuit if, if the minimum current i is maintained scr will be turned on even if gate is removed so in all practical cases you have to, you have to already studied the switching kara you can refer to my previous videos switch on and switch off kara i have already explained to you a negative current flows through the device this current reduces to zero only after the reverse recovery time trr when scr is said to have regained its reverse blocking capacity so you can see trr here and the voltage is negative negative current actually so the, the device can block a forward voltage only after a further tfr that is forward recovery time consequently the scr must continue to be reversed by for a minimum tfr plus trr that is equal to tq that is the turn off time okay so recombination time plus reverse recovery time already you have seen so you can, you can refer that video so this slide is actually i have explained through another video so the external circuit must therefore reverse by scr for a time t of which is greater than tq subsequently the reapplied forward bias voltage must rise at a dv by dt less than dv by dt of the up, uh, reapplied rate this dv by dt is less than the static counterpart so basically just understand uh, how we are turning on so turning off or doing the commutation so in your syllabus you have only turn on but you have turn on and turn off kara turn on method is there but when you talk about switching kara it is dynamic and stacking kara you have both turn on and turn off kara to be studied i have already explained this so i hope uh, it's clear for you different types of turn on methods of scr that is silicon controlled rectifier thank you